Welcome back to Bottom Line Offensive, a YouTube channel where we travel and go to adventures and tell you all about it in the first 60 seconds of the video. And in this 60 seconds, we're going to tell you about the Tower of London, or London Tower. I'm just going to call it a castle because that's pretty much what it is. It's a medieval fortress from medieval times, kings, queens. It's really like some Game of Thrones type stuff. Over this wall, three queens have been beheaded, like right in that grass plot over there. There's been children that have disappeared, 12 year olds that were heir to the crown, but then they just completely disappeared and their uncle suddenly magically became king. The crown jewels are in there as well. So if you like history, you'll love this. If you like stories, you'll love it even more. As long as you're not one of those people that's like, I don't watch Game of Thrones, I don't really like it, fine, then don't go here. However, we do recommend spending at least a half day because we went for an hour and 45 minutes, definitely not enough time. Half day minimum. If you come to London and you don't do this, you're missing out big time. In the Bloody Tower, one of the kings was killed, and so right where he dropped, it's still marked on the floor today, and you can go see it in the Bloody Tower. Correction, the Bloody Tower is not where a king was killed. Actually, something else bloody happened there, although there's no evidence of this. Lots of kings and queens, and I get the names confused, but I believe it was King Edward died way back when, and then so his eldest son should have been crowned king, and so they started bringing him to London to crown him king. He was like 12 years old, very small child, had a younger brother as well. His uncle was bringing him, and then when his uncle got here, he put him in that tower over there. And then they saw them playing in the garden the next day, and then after that, King's brother was crowned king, and the two little boys were just disappeared. No evidence of anything, they're just gone. Lots of whispers, obviously they were murdered or something. So we're in the White Tower now. The White Tower is really significant. It's pretty much a museum today. Two things that I think are really cool. They found two skeletons of children in here years later after the two uh, king's sons went missing. So I think that's pretty obvious whose skeletons those were. And also they have lots of armor in here. Some armor that was actually worn by kings and armor that was worn by the sons, the princes um, that may have went missing. But still, it's really cool. I keep saying this, but the history here is insane. In this little plot behind me, three queens were beheaded. Off with their heads. That's insane. The whole thing kind of centers around White Tower and honestly I'm a huge nerd when it comes to medieval times and armor and swords and weapons and all that Game of Thrones type stuff like I really nerd out on that and if you're like me and you appreciate that stuff you will find nothing more impressive than what's in that tower the largest collection of armor I've ever seen and these amazing weapons even like armor for a huge huge like giant dude which is kind of like the mountain from Game of Thrones, and then right next to him was armor for like a little dwarf. And then the sword that he had was just massive. It was like nine feet long. I doubt he could even lift it, but it looked like a pretty big dude. All the horses had armor and the cannons, and like there's an executioner's axe in the block, and they've actually executed 22 people here on these grounds. This is just super, super amazing if you're nerdy. If you don't appreciate this kind of stuff, like dragons and princesses and kings, you won't like it. Let's talk about Jimmy's favorite stories from London Tower. So, Sir Walter Raleigh was imprisoned in there. So for all of my North Carolina family back home, I thought that was cool. I don't know, they gave him such freedoms. They let him plant a garden and he grew stuff like tobacco. I know North Carolina's big on tobacco. I doubt there was a correlation there, but I don't know. I thought it was interesting. Oh, one of the gates, Shakespeare himself actually named it. He's like, we'll call this uh, the gate of the gardens. But later they changed it to something much more bloody and violent, but you know, he's Shakespeare, he's a romantic guy. There were 22 executions in there, and the way they executed people was not like in France with the, uh, the guillotine. They had an ax and a piece of wood and a big strong guy. The rest is just physics. Oh, so the crown jewels are in there. The line was super long, and we can't even bring a camera in there, so we didn't stand in line to see them. However, there was another room where there was no line at all, but they had all the crowns that were previously used. My point is there wasn't a line, so you can see all these 
crowns from kings and queens, you know, a thousand years ago. I think that's really cool. Kings died in there. There was one king that he was kneeling down, praying, saying, I really hope that I don't lose my kingdom. And during mid-prayer, someone came up behind him and just whacked him in the back of the skull with something heavy and metal, and he died right there on the spot. So they would tie the polar bear up around his neck and let him swim in the river so he could catch some fish. Just kind of madness, insane madness that went on in this fortress. Okay, that's enough.